Okay. So just another minute or two, and then we'll I'll start off here. So um, I have muted everyone. I have a mute all button and uh, each of you has the ability to unmute yourself. So um, as we move on through the uh, the morning, um, You'll hear me ask for questions. There's a chat function that is a very uh, handy way to ask questions. And we'll also invite you to unmute yourself and ask questions also as we move into the question and answer session. Alright, so uh, for those of you that are just joining. Uh, I'm James Martin. I'm the public art administrator for the city of Kansas City, Missouri. I'm joined this morning by Holly Hayden, who's the consulting artist on the uh, KCI uh, new single terminal and parking public art project. Good morning. And so what we'll do is, as I mentioned, we'll cover the basics this morning. And then uh, we'll cover uh, kind of do a walkthrough of the call for entry org website that we used uh, for you to upload your portfolios. Uh, we'll, we'll cover information about how art is selected, not only for KCI, but uh, for Kansas City, Missouri as a whole. Um, and then we'll give, we'll dive into, uh, we'll dive into um, information on the actual locations inside uh inside the uh the packet from the architect okay um so holly i'm going to introduce holly and, and turn it over to her and she's going to uh give you some information about the timeline and the types of uh calls for artists that are going to be rolled out in various stages so holly you want to take over um, hi good morning i'm holly hayden like James said, I'm the consulting artist for the new terminal and parking at KCI. Um, hopefully everyone got the email I sent last night with your registration and had time to maybe browse through some of those links. So I'm going to give an overview of the whole project just a little bit. And then, like James says, he'll dive into the process for applying. So I see that we're having a couple questions with audio and chat and video screen sharing. I know everyone's on so many different devices. Um, some people may not have the chat function or you may not have the screen share. So that's OK for this since we're recording it. But also in the chat, we'll read out loud the questions people are asking so you can hear those answers. And also, if you don't have the chat, you'll be able to just ask your questions out loud at the very end. So. Let me get started with sharing the screen and I'm going to share what we're calling our heat map art locations overview. Give it a second. So I can't see anybody when I'm sharing, so like thumbs up, thumbs down. James, tell me if everybody can see it. Yes. Perfect. OK, so this is the overview, kind of the aerial view of the new single terminal and parking. So this is these are some of the the words, the terminologies for the different locations that we'll be talking about. So when we say check in hall, head house, great hall, that's this area here. The concourses are here, so this I shape or this H shape we'll be referring to this throughout the presentation. So a lot of people have asked, well, I'm not a sculptor. I only see sculptor calls outright or sculpture calls out right now. Yeah, so let me scroll down here. Here's our budget and timeline rollout. So we're rolling out the RFQs in a staggered fashion 
just because we're on a design build timeline. And for those of you that don't know what design build is, um, I'll use a metaphor that James uses that I think describes it very well. It's like we're driving a train, but we're also building and laying the track in front of us as we're driving and then prepping the ground ahead of us to lay more track. So we have to do things in order as we get to that location, but it's one thing after another. It isn't just, here's the design, now you just build it all in a two-stage. This is a continuous stage process. So we'll be following that with the same rollouts for the art. So the four here for the fall, 2020, will be the four sculpture locations we'll be talking about today. But I did invite other artists that may not be sculptors because moving forward later on this winter, we'll have a ceramics call, audio, light, sound, other stairwell and arrivals roadways, which could be lighting or additional sculpture. And then next spring, we're calling it our portable artworks, but it's more wall-mounted artwork. It could be paintings, photography, textiles, 2D, digital, any of those things. So the process for all of these RFQs will be the same. So this particular session that we're having, the information James will give, will just put you that much further ahead of knowing exactly how the process goes. That will be the same regardless of what the, the discipline of the art is. So this is what we'll be referring to. So I sent this as an attachment for everyone. And if you didn't get it, we can resend. Also, I want to share what we'll be considering kind of our launch pad for everything. And I invite everyone to visit the website, buildkci.com slash art. This is where if you can't find any information, everything will be located here as the landing spot. And then you can find it from this location. So when I go to buildkci.com slash art, that's here. Here's the information about the public art program. All the calls that we'll talk about today and the subsequent ones will be here. So I can click there just to show you. So when I'm talking about the different locations, they're right here and here's the quick link. If you couldn't find it on call for entry, they're all right here. Let's go back. Here's where you registered for your artist information session. So that's where we're at right now. The timeline, you can view what we've already done. So you can look over the past year or so, the different presentations we've had, the different information we've gone over is available for you to download and watch here. Go back. And then also, hopefully you had a chance to scroll through some of this if you had questions about a little bit of where do I find information about the city, which James will get into here next. All of this right here, information about the public art program. This is kansascitymissouri.gov. That's what this means. You can sign up for uh, our project notifications through the city right here. And then here's some FAQs that we've already received. So a lot of the main questions that people had about the project are here. And after today's session and compiling with Wednesdays, we'll have a longer list of questions and answers that we'll circulate to the group, add as an addendum to the RFQ and email out to everyone. So that's kind of the overview of where we're at. Um, James, did I miss anything on, on that before we get right into the process? Sorry, I was muted. So, um, did you want to cover the other locations beside the concourses and the uh, Great Hall? Or, hmm. or point, point yeah. that out as we go. Mm -hmm. Jump back to the other screen. Yeah, so back to our sort of I or H layout. The ones we're going to specifically talk about today are the check-in hall, which is here, the escalator to the baggage claim, which is here. Then when we say node A, we're describing this first retail hub. This is the connector, and then node B, and then you're into concourse B. So today's focus is check-in hall, escalator to baggage claim, node A and node B. And parking garage is over here, and here's those locations. That'll be on the second rollout later on this winter. And here's all the budgets for those as well. So you can just kind of have a quick overview. 
All right, thanks, Holly. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to cover some of the basics about the 1% for ARC program. Uh, some of you are familiar with the program, but just to ensure we're all on the same page, the 1% for ART program in Kansas City has uh, been in existence uh, for over 30 years. And the authorizing language that sets up the 1% for ART program uh, provides for 1% of the costs of a public building to be set aside for aesthetic adornment is the language that's used. And uh, there's a specific reference to art. Uh, so given that KCI is a public building, uh, we have the, the project set aside 1% of above ground vertical construction costs for the public art program. Um, if you're interested in learning about public art programs, uh, excuse me, or public art calls in addition to KCI, um, you can do that um, by subscribing. Holly, I want you to go to kcmo.gov slash subscribe first, please. There you go. So it's kcmo.gov slash subscribe, and this is where you sign up for all the city's newsletters public art opportunities is toward the bottom of the page. And so uh, I manage the public art, art opportunities for the city beyond KCI. There, there are others that will be coming up. Okay, um, so Holly was also pointing out kcmo.gov slash art. And that is a recently updated page for the Kansas City, Missouri Public Art Program. The 1% for art tab has uh, background information uh, about the program, uh, especially down at the bottom. There are links for things like how to apply, how art selections are made, and if one gets into a contractual relationship with the city, what are the sort of typical requirements of the contract? So we'll cover some of that coming up here in a few minutes. Um, I'd like to uh, cover, first of all, that right now we are at the RFQ stage for the uh, first four sites in the new terminal at KCI. And so it's, RFQ is request for qualifications, and at this point we'll be uh, evaluating artist portfolios rather than actual proposals. And so the way the art selection process works is that we uh, we have a selection panel that evaluates your portfolio and your background as you have uploaded it to callforentry.org. And that selection panel then uh, will identify a short list of semifinalist artists. It's usually three. Uh, it can be as few as two. It can go up as many as five artists. Those shortlisted semifinalists will be the artists that will be asked for a proposal, and that's the RFP stage. So a lot of people uh, think that terms RFQ and RFP are interchangeable, and they're not, at least from the perspective of the KCMO Public Art Program. The first stage really is about uh, evaluating uh, qualifications as they're expressed through your portfolio and your resume, et cetera, your letter of interest. So, um, you've heard me refer to callforentry.org. Uh, this is an online artist submission management tool. There are um, a number of them out there. The City of Kansas City, Missouri has chosen callforentry.org as our provider of this service. Uh, it was started by a nonprofit uh, regional arts agency and uh, it has been around for quite a while and has uh, you know, very good um, penetration in the market. And uh, it, it, uh, you know, they all have their pros and cons, but uh, this is the one that uh, we feel that would meet the need the best. So Holly, do you wanna do a quick walkthrough of CAFE? Sure. <clears throat> um, and 
like I said, the easiest way to, to directly go to our links through cafe is through the buildkci.com website. So I'm just choosing the first one, the check-in hall. So this will bring me up. We're, we're calling it cafe. It's callforentry.org. Um, most of you may be familiar with it. So the first step in the entire RFQ process would be to have a portfolio uploaded on callforentry.org. So that would be step number one for any artists that don't already have that. So I'm logged in under my account so I can kind of walk you through what this will look like. But when you click on those links, it brings you directly to the RFQ for this one is specifically the check-in hall. So when I scroll through here, this, I know it's really wordy, but this is all of the eligibility, the requirements, a little bit of the project background, the budget breakdown, all of those things are in this information right here. So you'll want to read through this based on which location you want to apply for. And another side note on that, we had a lot of questions. You're free to apply for as many locations as you like. So please do that if more than one location interests you as an artist or an art team. But there'll be separate, um, keep in mind, there'll be separate entries. So if you'd like to apply for all four locations, that's four separate entries. So they will have different selection panels and James will get into that as well. So your letter of interest may be just a little bit different for each one of the locations to make sure you're introducing your art team, yourself as an artist and explaining um, your interest in that particular location to those panels. So yeah, scrolling through here, this is what it's gonna look like. It should look the same for everybody, no matter what your device is. Here at the very bottom is the overview of the schedule. So if you're curious of when I apply, what's the date I hear anything back, when is the RFP phase, all of that is outlined right here. So you'll want to look at the bottom and make sure that that falls in line with um, a timeline that you're able to complete also if you get to the RFP stage. So there's that. And the apply button is, is right here at the top. Okay. So I'm logged in. I'll just show you what it would look like once you have a login. So you just agree. So here's the way we set it up for how you'll actually apply. And we had some questions of what format do you want um, our application materials in? And this sets it up really easy for you. So through call for entry, in your portfolio, you'll already have all of your images uploaded. So all you have to do is just go through and click the ones that you want to share with us. So that makes it easy. And then also, your image list, the letter of interest, and your resume CV, we just have an upload file for you. So say you have a team, so your resume, it needs to be one document, but it could be multi-pages. So if you have multiple artists, we would like all the resumes and CVs for everyone in your team. You can upload that right here. So that's what it'll look like. We tried to make this as easy as possible. So there's that. One other little trick that they have in profile if you scroll down if you have an individual artist profile there's now a tab here is this an individual or team account so if you have multiple artists working on this one you can actually choose team and add your partners here so that makes it really convenient and that's on the profile tab is that right? yeah that's that's the profile here and say you're in your profile and you're updating your portfolio and oh no, now I don't know where the that KCI link was. It's really easy to find when you go to call for or apply to calls. Just type in KCI and it's the first one that pops up. So that's a super easy way to search it too, if for some reason you get down the rabbit hole of call for entry. But also back to our launch pad here buildkci.com slash art will always bring you back to where you can find all of these things. So I, I think that was a quick overview. If I'm going too fast, somebody like sort of wave your hand or, or ask, you know, ask a question. Um, James, is there anything else specifically that I should? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just add that, you know, 
refer to artist teams, that's an option. You know, you can you can certainly um, apply as an individual artist. You can apply as a team. You can apply as an artist team like a fabricator or uh, other type of professional like an architect, etc. We just we just need to have the, the, the qualifications, the uh, resumes, the CVs of everybody that's on your team. If you're applying as a team, we need to get those up front. Uh, so let me cover for a moment how art is selected for the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, you heard me talk about uh, a selection panel. Uh, the selection panel is made up of seven people. Uh, there, for the KCI new terminal parking, there will be a core group of four individuals that uh, will serve on all of the selection panels for KCI. And then for each of the locations, <clears throat> excuse me, each of the locations, <clears throat> there will be three additional selection panelists added to make a total of seven for each location. So each location will have its own selection panel. Um, to go over the background, you can go to kcmo.gov slash art and click on how KCMO selects public art for 1% for art mm -hmm. projects. That will bring up uh, a document that gives you the background on what the selection criteria are. And by the way, the selection criteria also appear on callforentry.org for each of the locations. So the selection panel ref will refer to this to this uh, selection criteria as they evaluate portfolios. It's down um, down lower, Holly. I'm going to scroll down. You'll see. Here's the criteria. Uh, the selection panelists will use these criteria for evaluating qualifications. Um, the short lists of semifinalists will be identified by that panel, typically three artists. Those three artists will be asked to create proposals. The um, those uh, semifinalists will then be interviewed by the selection panel. The selection panel will then identify the finalist and an alternate. And the finalist's proposal is uh, presented to the Municipal Art Commission for their approval. The Municipal Art Commission is a group of uh, individuals appointed by the mayor of Kansas City. Uh, to be the, the city's uh, authority on um, on the arts, visual art in particular, public art. Uh, so once the Municipal Art Commission approves that finalist proposal, the uh, City Council of Kansas City, Missouri also has to approve uh, because of the scale of the projects that we're uh, talking about here. City Council approves all contracts over four hundred thousand dollars. So there's really kind of a three level process. There's the selection panel, there's the Municipal Art Commission, and then there's the City Council also. Uh, the finalists after the, their contract has been approved um, by city council, um, you know, we'll, we'll begin work uh, per the schedule outlined in the contract. Uh, the contract phase, as some of you know, can, can take a while. Uh, so, um, you know, we just move through that as quickly as we can. And sometimes questions can come up during that contracting phase. And if that's the case, there are organizations that we can refer you to uh, for, for guidance and information. All right, any anything about uh, selection, Holly, that I didn't cover that I more detail? I think you got it. I think we just want to. Yeah, just delineate that RFQ versus the RFP phases. It's it's sort of in different different chunks, and today specifically, we'll be talking about that RFQ portion. Right. 
Okay, I think we are ready then to dive into the packet of information from the architect, okay. Skidmore, Owens, and Merrill. After that, we'll have the question and answer session. All right, thumbs up if you can see it. Yes. Okay, perfect. So yeah, welcome to the new single terminal parking at KCI. So these are uh, these are architectural renderings. So some of this may change. Some of these renderings are um, a year or even two years old. We've been working on this project quite a long time. So it's very exciting that we're at the R RFQ phase. So we'll just start with, um, I'm actually, let me rewind just a little bit. If you can't see the share screen, the download of this, I sent it in the email. I'm gonna call out which page I'm on too if you printed one out or you're following along at home as well, just so you know where I'm at. So yeah, page one, this is a view of when you're driving up to the terminal. So the terminal's on your right side, the garage is, is over here, you can't see it in this picture. So this is what we're referring to as the head house, the check-in hall or the great hall is inside. And I'll refer to this front corner here to give you a perspective when we go through the different views of it so you know where I'm at in there. So all of this is glass, as you can see. So the first sculpture location, keep in mind you'll be able to see through the glass and see it hanging in here. So that's the first part of it. Page two is the overview of the project description and I'll let you guys read that at your leisure. This is also included in the RFQ. Here's the overview of that I shape or that H shape again. Same image as here. I'll toggle back and forth so we can compare. It may take a second to load. Here we go. Yeah, same layout. This is with all the locations. And then the one in the packet is just the four, the first four sculpture locations. So again, check-in hall is here. That escalator is located here. Number three is node A. Go so through the connector, and number four is node B. So check-in hall. So in the earlier picture, I pointed out that front corner. That's this front corner now. So we're actually on the inside looking the other direction. So you can kind of get your bearings of where we're looking. And here's a rendering of the ceiling area. So you can see where we're talking about of where um, a sculpture installation may be placed. Um, I want to point out in the upper right here, if you're following along, I'm on page four. In red right here, we'll always point out where you're at in that eye shape of the terminal. So you always know where, where they're describing these, this information. So within the, I won't get into all the specifics of the structural provisions and all that. It's in here if you need to know weight loads and distribution and all of that. Um, at this stage, we're not asking for any proposals. So just things to keep in mind um, for the future. That's there. Going on to page five. Here's that aerial view right here. Again, to put you in perspective, is that corner I'm talking about. So the lower right there. So when you were driving up, that was that corner you can see. So from this perspective, you can see how huge this is. It's 732 feet by this one. So just thinking about the scale of a piece of artwork that would need to go in this space to fit um, something like that. So where I'm looking right here, that's 90 feet this direction, 732 across. And again, this photo here, I'll see if I can zoom in just a little bit, if that helps. This is kind of the cutaway here, if you were looking at it through the front. So you can see there's check-in on one side, check-in on the other side, and then security's here in the middle. And then the next location we'll talk about is back in here is that escalator you can see. Moving on to page six, 
This is the side view if you were looking at it. Again, this would be that corner that I mentioned before, and you're looking at it from the side. These are the Y structural elements that are in the front, and this is the roadway here. Moving on to the next location, so in the upper right corner, the little red lets you know where we're at. So we've moved from the check-in hall to the baggage claim. This is a side view. Over here is where we just talked about. This would be that, that back wall. Oh, something I totally didn't mention. Got ahead of myself. Back up. This entire back wall here will be a vein cut limestone. So that'll be a natural element um, from Missouri. So it kind of goes with the natural elements of our, our state and the surrounding areas. So keep that in mind too, that natural element that'll be here. On the, all the renderings, not all the finishings are correct too. Let me just point that out. So back to escalator. This location here is where we're envisioning a hanging piece. Go to page eight. Hopefully you can kind of see the same view, just the line drawing view. To describe how you get to this location, you would go through the check-in hall. I don't know, maybe this one's easier. Come through the check-in hall, come through security here, and you would go to your concourses. But after you have arrived back on your back from your flight, this location coming down the escalator would be where everyone arrives through to get your baggage and baggage claims down here. But this glass right here, as people are coming through security, you can see through the glass to see this sculpture installation. So there's actually a 360 view and under it that um, are a view that may not be in some of the other locations. So keep that in mind as well. Side view, aerial view with some of the dimensions here of where everything is. That's page eight. Page nine, here's some other views. Again, these are just rendered in white. It doesn't have all the finishings on this, just so you can kind of see the, the 3D model of this. Here's the location where it would be hanging. There's two escalators that come down, so it would be in this area right here. And right above that is the glass that you can see through it, and we're currently in baggage claim from this view. This is at the top of the escalator. You would be going, descending into baggage claim. Here is that view looking through the glass. If you had just come through security, you can see the escalators back here. So the sculpture would kind of be hanging on the other side of this. Here's that longer side cutaway. So this was the roadway, the Y beams, essentially the front door, you come in the check-in hall, check in. Here's where that limestone wall would be. You go through security. You either go to concourse A, which is here. You're going to run into node A right here, or you continue on through the connector. And then anyone coming off of their flight and arriving would come back through this way, go on the escalator, down to baggage claim, here, and then out. Moving on to page 10, we'll talk about retail node A. This rendering um, is, is pretty old. Don't really go by this, especially here. This location, we've been calling it our Inspired by Fountains location. So those of you that may not be from Kansas City or know much about Kansas City, we are known as the City of Fountains. That's one of our nicknames. So that's something that's really important that we wanted to bring into um, the new terminal and have that represented. So there's a little mini history here and it's also on the specific RFQ uh, write-up for node A so you can read that a little further in depth. So this idea here is it's a fountain but it won't actually be water. So we want artists or artist teams to reimagine what does a waterless fountain look like and that's completely up to the team to come up with that idea whether it's digital or fabric or glass or light or whatever whatever those may be within your your discipline 
And this particular location, it's in the middle of the first retail node. So literally every person that comes through the new terminal will walk past this area. So we're calling it our showstopper also. So keep that in mind that this will be the most trafficked area that everyone will see either on their way to their gate or coming back as well. And there may be locate other locations around here where performances might be going on near this location. There'll be retail, there'll be seating, a lot of activity happening in this area. And up here pointing out where that's at in the eye shape. It's, it's the first hub, the first node before you go to the first concourse. So here's the footprint view of node A. So this particular location, like I said, it will be very high traffic. So the footprint is very specific of there's a 20 by 20 footprint, but this particular location can be floor mounted or hanging or a combination of both. So there's that availability. And on this view, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if you can see it in the drawing. A little bit here, there's a pop-up here with windows. So there'll actually be natural light coming in. So keep that in mind as well. So it shows it here that it pops up a little higher than the rest of the concourse. So yeah, there's your measurement right there. And there's your floor footprints. Here's some other views. Again, the finishings are not done. It's just all in white on this 3D model. So you can kind of see if you were walking around it, the space in there, you're seeing the pop-up right here. And then again, here's that side view that we saw in the previous, um, previous slides of security fountain location is what we're calling here. Here's that pop-up. So this is node A right here and retail surrounding it. So moving on to node B, so you can see, let me go back where we were right here in the upper right corner with the red square and then where we've moved to. Now we're at node B here. So node B is very similar with that same pop-up. It'll have retail surrounding it. The only difference on this one is it will be hanging only. There's not a floor space that it would be mounted to. So that's the difference on that location. Here's the footprint on that. It has a little bit of a bigger footprint only because it will be above the high traffic area and it won't have to be mounted on the floor. Again, the pop-up, it's the same height as node A. And again, if I'm going too fast, somebody sort of wave your hands and, and slow me down. Um, here's the same views of the renderings with no finishings. Same kind of area around. There's retail, a lot of traffic. There's the hanging location here, that same pop-up. Here's something to think about when you're looking at the overall finishings. Like I was saying, those were just a, a white 3D renderings. Here's the material palette from the architect. So again, if you're not familiar with Kansas City or the Midwest, this is very um, similar to the surroundings that will be in the exterior of where the new terminal and parking will be located. So a lot of natural tones, there's terrazzos, there's um, the greens, the browns, all of that, so kind of keep that in mind, just an overview for the rest of the uh, the finishings, the fabrics, the flooring that will be surrounding any of the artwork. We're back to our first drawing, or first rendering. So talking about the exterior and sort of the materials and that natural feel, knowing most of the terminal will actually be glass. I don't know if you could see that on some of the other renderings but we'll go through some of the other areas so you can get an overall feel. So here, let's go back. This, the next slide will be if you're standing in front of looking through. So here, 
again, there's that back wall that will be that vein cut limestone. So that natural element when you're looking through the glass and here's that ceiling portion to envision where a hanging installation would go in this space. You could actually see it through any of the, the angles through the windows. Here's the retail node A rendering again, just it has a little more um, side view so you can see where you'd be going to the gates and going through the, the connector. Another view of the retail area, again, showcasing that from wherever you are, it will be glass and you can see out into um, either the airfield or natural elements. Here's the connector. One thing I didn't point out, I'll toggle back to our original layout. Let's see, give it a second. Here we go. This area right here in the middle of the connector, so connector connects node A and node B, and it will have people movers on there. In the middle here is an area that's all glass that'll be an airfield viewing area, but also have a historical display element. So that's where that would be housed is right here. And that's separate from the 1% for R RFQ, but it'll be an element that will uh, tie in, hopefully whatever artwork may go in the connector. That's the next RFQ round for later this winter. We don't have any specifics on that just yet. Go back. Here we go. So yeah, that, pop out area, the airfield viewing is what we're looking at in this view. Here's the baggage claim. So when you come down that escalator after you would see that hanging piece, this would be what you see. And out the windows again, there's actually going to be a green space, seating area, another fountain outside, all that separate from our art locations. Be keeping in mind those natural elements that you'll be able to view from most of the locations inside the terminal. And we're back at the beginning. So that was the four locations we currently have open RFQs. And I'll turn it back over to James. All right, thank you, Holly. Uh, there was a question in chat about um, the glass being available as a support. And that's really a more of an RFP question than an RFQ question, uh, from my perspective anyway. Um, so um, that would be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, one of the semifinalist artists might want to use the glass and it would just depend on what their design is and which part of the terminal uh, they want that work to appear in and, you know, what, what other purposes are does that area of glass have? Uh, so case by case basis is the answer to that question. Um, so with that, I think we are ready to go into a Q&A session. And you're welcome to send your questions via chat. Um, that tends to be a little easier to answer in kind of a you know uh, case by case basis. If you some of you might not have a uh, chat icon might not have chat availability depending on your system and other factors and if that's the case then you can just um or excuse me unmute yourself and we invite you to ask a question that way and the sure. chat let me oh. go ahead go ahead Ollie. oh i was going to jump in and sort of do the q a of the top three questions we got asked first ah uh, yes okay that's yeah. right thank you yeah, let me do that. So the first one, we might have covered these just briefly, but yeah, out of everything anyone asked, these were the top three. Um, the I don't have a lot of experience as a public artist, but can I still apply? And James covered that earlier of potentially partnering with um, another artist team or a fabricator or an engineer to kind of give you those things that maybe your art studio would be lacking for this particular uh, RFQ. So there was that one. Um, and keeping in mind, if you are applying as a team, we do need all of those different artists' CVs and resumes, 
And then in your 10 images that you'll show, showing a range of everyone's abilities would be great too. We definitely want to make sure you're introducing the panelists to you as an artist, to you as your team, and your overall vision of how you would make the project happen. So keep that in mind. Um, the other one, um, I think I briefly covered this one. Can I apply to multiple locations? Absolutely. You can apply for as many as you'd like. So feel free to do that. Um, also keep in mind there'll be separate applications though. So you'll have to apply um, you know, four separate times if you want all four locations. Um, another question people ask was, can I propose an existing work I already have or is this for new work only? James mentioned this in the 1% for Art program. This particular project is for new site-specific works. So yeah, everything that we would, if you make it to the RFP phase to submit a proposal, that would be brand new work that you would be creating specifically for the location you're going out for. So it wouldn't be something that's already in existence and we just drop it in. It would be brand new. So those were the top three, and we can just go ahead and open it up if there's other questions. Oh, I see someone saying, do you have images of the terminal connector? Let me, in the presentation, we'll be going over that in the next round. So this won't be the only art information session. We'll have these same ones for each location. So hold up for a couple more months this winter and we'll do the same one with more images of that connector. But in the meantime, let me show you where you can find uh, all the renderings of, of the airport. Again, let's go, oh, wrong thing, hold on. Let me get to the right. Again, build Holly, KCI. I'll drop that link. Oh, okay. It's gonna say it, buildkci.com slash art going to the tab at the top that says sort of background and images and renderings. So let's see. Let's see. So here, see that I'm on buildkci.com. There we go. At the top, it says gallery. So there's images and videos of all different portions of the new build. So you can follow along and actually see this in real time as the build is happening. So this hub, again, at Build KCI has the most updated information for all of those, those images, those news stories that come out, and the art portion as well. So that's my go-to for anything if you want um, the latest, greatest information. Okay. So uh, I'm answering the question about how you can be informed of the next meeting. That is um, through casimo.gov slash subscribe. To our uh, public art opportunities email list, and so you'll get the uh, the notice of the calls for artists. And in that calls for artists, just as we've done for this round, we'll list when the meetings are and and how you can access the meetings. And let's see, there was a question about also. What kind of glass will be used? Um, that will have to be a get back to you kind of question. And again, that's really more of a uh, RFP stage question. Yeah, um, certainly the, the questioner is asking about how ultraviolet light might affect finish, et cetera. And, um, you know, that that will be a concern of mine as well as uh, the, the city's person on point for managing its art collection, its art assets, uh, having something in place to, to manage UV um, ultraviolet uh, radiation will be important. Uh, at this point, I can't answer exactly what the glass is made of. And see, 
Uh, somebody it? asked, can we have a team member that's not a U.S. citizen? Yes, of course. There is a recommendation that internationally based artists use a U.S. based fabricator. Also, uh, there's a question about. Uh, for the check in and baggage area, can you do a quick recap on the potential site? OK, let me pull up. a. Was there a specific question about it or you want to see yeah. the image again? So, so the so, so for the check in hall. The the vein cut limestone is that 730 odd feet uh, dimension. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when the artist makes the proposal, uh, we'd have to evaluate and work with the artist on which part of that long space would be the most desirable. So I don't have an exact answer yet as to which part of that 732 foot space would be the perfect location for ceiling based art. It's something we'd have to work through with the uh, the project team. And the baggage uh, later area, Holly. OK. Was there a specific question or just wanted to see the image so again? So just to clarify, the, the sculpture is not, at this point, we, we haven't imagined it hanging over the escalator itself. Um, it's kind of in between the escalators. So see the, the kind of pink red area here? So if you're looking at it from the top, but it would be essentially over the escalators, if that makes sense but it's this area in between, but depending on what the, you know, what it looks like, we, we can't determine that at this point. Uh, there's a question about using an internationally based fabricator and should we include our fabricator on our application as a team member? There's no prohibition against using an internationally based fabricator. We just think given the, the global pandemic and, you know, challenging factors related to that, it's recommended that fabricators based in the US. And should we include our fabricator on our application as a team member? Uh, certainly not a bad idea. Uh, there's, there's no reason not to that I can think of. Um, OK, let's see. Should we include all of our team, including multiple fabricators? Well, so the way that CAFE works, Holly pointed out on the profile tab, you can set yourself up to, as to whether you're re you're registering as a as an individual or as a team. That's one way you can address the team aspect through CAFE. The other way is that. Um, everybody that's applying will be uploading their resume or CV if you prefer that term. Um, the trick there is that CAFE only allows you to upload one resume, so it's going to have to be multiple pages. And so anybody that you want to include as part of your team, make sure you include multiple pages on your, your resume. It's not just you, it's, it's your whole team. Um, so you're certainly welcome to include your team. And again, I don't see any drawback um, doing that. Scale for these sculptural components are mostly to be determined. Yes. Yes, um, in, the, in the proposal. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, well, we have I some can... basic. All right, go ahead, Holly. Oh, well, I was going to say too, let me share what we've, sh what we have before also. if. Maybe you're unfamiliar with uh, just the scale of other airports artwork. We've brought together several in. So if you go to buildkci.com slash art again, go to our timeline. We put together a presentation last spring, online presentation still viewable by clicking here. It shows examples of other airports, 
best practices, what works, talks a little bit about public art in general, that would be a really good resource. Just kind of click through that at your leisure and see um, if there was anything in that presentation that you had questions about, and then we can address that. But that kind of goes over all those like scale in space with a lot of traffic around it, just kind of what's worked for other locations. If that's helpful. Yeah, we have some of the basic dimensions at this point. For example, we yeah. know that the fountain area, fountain in quote, right? Uh, inspired by fountain area is a 20 by 20 uh, mm -hmm. footprint. We know that in certain places we can tell you how high the ceiling is going to be. And so, you know, the, you can get a general sense of what the scale should be. Um, next question, can we provide broad based conceptual thoughts in the RFP? OK, so this this indicates to me that there's a bit of uh, confusion yet. RFP is, is request for proposals. RFQ is request for qualifications. We're currently at the RFQ stage. There's nothing preventing you from including broad based conceptual thoughts at this stage, at the RFQ stage. There's nothing prohibiting you from doing that, but we're not evaluating you on that. We're evaluating you on your portfolio, on your qualifications. The, the conceptual, uh, you know, the design work comes as part of the RFP stage. Uh, but certainly you're welcome to include conceptual thoughts if you'd like to. Let's see. All right, I think I'm caught up. Does anybody have a question they want to ask through their microphone? You can un unmute yourself and do that. I see August's hand is raised. Is that a question, August? I wasn't raising my hand. I'm just watching. OK. I mean, I have a zillion questions, but I'm not going to uh, take over the whole meeting. So I'll get to it at some point. Okay. Oh, if anybody has individual questions, like, for yeah. example, about yeah. your own art practice that maybe you don't want to say out loud, the arts build KCI at Gmail, that goes directly to me. That's where you got your registration link feel free to shoot us over an email and I'll ask James if I don't know the answer or I can ask the architects if it's a question specifically about uh, your work and would it be eligible. I'll put that in the chat. OK, there's a question about how critical is it to have a fabricator in mind? Can this be researched at a later time if the concept artwork artwork is approved? Um, it, it's it's optional to include your fabricator at the RFQ stage at the current stage. It's optional if you feel like it will make you more competitive to include your fabricator and fabricators uh, resonate. Then by all means, please include it. Um, can the fabricator be researched at a later time if the concept artwork is approved? Yes, certainly. I mean, we, we have gotten into contracts with artists in which they, you know, the, the way the Kansas City, Missouri 1% for Art program typically works is that the contract is with the artist and everybody else presumably works as a subcontract to the artist. Now, in theory, if an artist said, I actually want my fabricator to be the primary uh, on the contract and I'll be the subcontractor to the fabricator. That's not a situation that I've run into, but you know, we could certainly run it in front of various uh, you know, key, key departments here in, in City Hall and see if that's acceptable. One thing maybe we didn't mention in this session was uh, we do have a list of Kansas City fabricators that have reached out wanting to um, be willing and, and able to answer artist questions or partner with them if that might work. That'll be circulating with these recorded video sessions and the Q&A next week once we compile all that information together. So look for that email. If you did register, I have your email. So you're automatically on that list that will receive that information.
we went through this fast. You guys are pretty quiet with questions. We do still have, we're scheduled to 1130, so mm -hmm. you know, plenty of time yet for any questions you have. Okay, um, here's the question. If we are out of town, how intensive will out of town meeting be if selected? Okay. Uh, so I think you're asking how many how many meetings would you be expected to attend if you're selected? Uh, it's difficult to difficult to predict, really. Um, you know, I think the good news the good news, uh, uh, the good news of the uh, the pandemic, uh, if there is good news, is that. Speaking personally, my my video conferencing skills have gone up great. So uh, I, I would imagine that artists located outside the Kansas City area would be able to, to get a lot of the meetings done by video. And also uh, speaking to that question on the bottom of the RFQs, it does have actual dates of when the interview process would happen and when some of the meetings would happen. So you can look ahead um, just to see if you're going to be out of town and work around those dates. So it's at the very bottom of each of the RFQs. So just scroll to the bottom and you can you can check on those dates. And there's a question uh, the uh, from Harold Smith says, my primary practice is painting, but it seems all of the artwork is hanging sculpture. Am I correct? That's the case for the calls for artists that we are rolling out currently. Uh, remember, we have other calls for artists that we um, are going to be rolling out this winter and in the spring. So the four that we're rolling out today, three of them are for hanging the the fountain area. Fountain inspired area, right? Uh, that's not defined as either floor or ceiling. It's more open ended. The others have been identified as uh, ceiling based hanging works. And so, to speak a little more to Harold's question, uh, yeah. you may be referring to murals. Harold, I know we've had a lot of questions about murals. Um, the reality of this terminal is most of the walls are glass. So there aren't it, not specifically a spot for a, a large scale mural, but in those concourses, large scale paintings will absolutely be something that um, will be considered and that'll be in the spring. We'll roll out that RFQ. Okay. Thank you, Holly. Uh, another question, who does the installation of the artwork? Well, the artist is presumably the primary contractor. That's how we normally do it. And so they are in charge of ensuring that the installation is done and done well and done by a certain date that is agreed upon beforehand. Uh, typically artists subcontract with a, a specialist in that realm of, of art handling and installation. And that individual would also be working closely with um, project architects, et cetera, uh, to check the design to make sure it's going to work. Uh, artists as the primary contractor will be responsible for having an engineering approval of their work. And so that's uh, a subcontractor that you can pretty much guarantee as being one of your costs would be the engineering approval. OK, here's a question about how do you qualify if you have only done small projects but have a very large project envisioned? Uh, that is uh, certainly one of the challenges of public art, and that's why uh, we have tried to be more transparent and, and more welcoming to artists that want to partner. Uh, the qualification stage, um, you know, in order to make yourself more competitive, you might seek out a, a partner, a team member for that. Um, occasionally, and, and this is not the case at KCI, I, I will add, I will preface my remarks by saying this is not the case at KCI, but occasionally 
public art projects will not have an RFQ phase. They'll just have an RFP. They want proposals right up front. And the reason they do that is exactly for this question that it, it uh, can open up the field a bit to artists that don't have a whole lot of experience in public art. The drawback is that if you've got 100 artists that are applying, if I'm the public art administrator and I've asked 100 artists to make me a proposal, to make me a, a, a maquette, a drawing, whatever, I'm going to choose one of those artists. Uh, and so the uh, other 99 artists, I have just asked to make a design for free. So that's why we typically have an RFQ phase instead of an RFP immediately. But there are certainly advantages to that. And so, so those artists that might want to get more experience in public art might look for prod for calls for artists that are for proposals immediately. And that was the question from Tina. So I hope I've answered your question, mm -hmm. Tina. Robert, do you have your hand raised? I do. OK, yeah, go ahead. It's just for your consideration in the installation of 2D or 3D work, my past experience is that you're going to bump up against union labor who says we're in charge of hanging, not you. Yeah. So that is a consideration you might want to think about. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Excellent point. And um, Missouri is a prevailing wage state. And so one of the typical contractual requirements of artists working on a public artist public art project is they, they do have to meet Missouri prevailing wage, uh, which all that information is available on the Missouri Department of Labor website. If you're curious, it really only will impact the artists that are going to be in a contract with us. Um, so there, there is a definitely a negotiation process uh, with the, the trade, uh, the tradespeople, the union tradespeople uh, to help them understand that we're meeting prevailing wage, uh, and so that's that's why uh, my colleagues here in City Hall can and can help with that process. Um, there's a question from Michael: Are there two-dimensional projects involved with this construction project? So that's what we've imagined as. Uh, being more appropriate for the concourse areas, the concourse concourse A and concourse B, uh, which we have identified as uh, so-called portable art. And so we've imagined traditionally framed paintings, traditionally fame, framed uh, fiber works, for example, sculptural works that hang on a wall, um, photographs, works on paper, etc. Uh, that's we before we released this call for artists, we went through a, a process in the spring of working with a consultant and also with a team of local advisory artists to identify where the locations for art should be and how much budget should be attached to a particular location. And so that's the uh, that's what was envisioned for uh, more traditionally two-dimensional works is that uh, the concourse areas um, could accommodate some of those. Yeah. To add to that, James, something I don't even think we've mentioned at all on this info session is um, down the road, the opportunity for rotating artwork, temporary art installations, uh, live music, performances, all of those things that would go on um, after essentially the 1% is over so moving forward into the future of the airport all of those things are in the works as a look ahead but that's completely separate than from the one percent for art that'll be a completely different operating budget within the aviation department so as we get information about that we'll circulate it but that's you know a year or two down the road before we'll have really any specifics about that the airport has to get or the terminal and parking garage have to get built first before we're doing that. And I know um, I'm correcting myself. It's not a new airport. It's a new terminal and parking within our existing airport. There's a question from Melissa's murals. Uh, you're welcome, Justin. Uh, uh -huh. Melissa's murals, I, I just want to be clear that you're looking for qualified artists at this time. You do not want us to create the actual piece we envision now to be placed in the airport. 
Um, yes, correct. Yeah, we're looking at portfolio words. Uh, here's a question from Laura. Does the floor project have to be ceramic? And Laura, I, I'm imagining you are asking about the um, the floor based ceramics that are coming up in the next call this this winter. And yes, that has been identified again, not by Holly or myself, but by through a, a public process with a consultant that uh, calls for large scale ceramics um, in the great hall, the check in hall. The call for artists for that will happen um, this winter. And the rationale behind that is that Kansas City has a long history of excellence in ceramics um, through collecting ceramics, the teaching of ceramics, the making of ceramics. Uh, we're, we're known as kind of a clay town. All right, we're 1114. We've still got 15 minutes more for any questions. Robert, is your hand still up? Thank you. Well, yeah, well, we appreciate everyone joining this morning. And uh, should you have additional questions, feel free to email us artsbuildkci at gmail.com. Reach out, send us a, a question and answer. Like I said, next week, probably mid next week, give us a couple days to combine all the information from Wednesday's session and today. We'll be circulating all those questions, answers, and also the links to rewatch both video sessions. We'll put those online and circulate that. And then also the list of Kansas City fabricators that were available to answer any questions for artists. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's it. We got, we got through it pretty fast. And thank you everyone for your time. And I look forward to uh, seeing the applications roll in. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Appreciate your enthusiasm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh. Got everybody. Let's see. All right. Well, bye. Thank you.